Nothing at all 
Good morning to you all, um, and welcome to a, this morning's Sabbath school. Uh, we want to thank the Lord for granting us the opportunity to have come together. If uh, I am audible to all of you, uh, please just, uh, I mean, in fact, if uh, I am not quite audible or clear, please just let me know. Um, so uh, to begin, without um, any further ado, I'd like to ask uh, Elder Ruswa, if you can hear me, to please uh, open for us with a word of prayer. Uh, Amen. Uh, shall we pray? Papa. Our kind Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Sabbath you have given us. We thank you for the message that you have in store for us. May you be with the teacher as he's going to, to facilitate this lesson. And may you bless all those who are still on their way to this lesson. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Elder Rousseau. Um, So once again, I'd like to welcome you all. Uh, I hope that you all had a uh, wonderful week. And uh, you all are ex as excited as I am to venture into this uh, very brand new um, uh, uh, quarter, um, and we also have a new study that we are going to be looking at, which is rest, uh, rest in Jesus, rest in Christ. And so, the first lesson of the of the of the quarter is looking at living in a society uh, that is uh, a twenty four seven society, the kind of society I'm sure most of us understand we are living in now uh, a society that has so much going on um, left, right and center, so much that um, you find that the issue of time um, becomes, um, you know, a, 
a very, 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 um, uh, you know, it becomes something that's very apparent to many of us. And also, I think the most important thing to look at is, you know, the demands upon your time. Um, how much time do you have? It seems like uh, nobody has enough of it, you know. Uh, and so we have to squeeze um, every little thing that we can, you know, in the time that we have. And so, or oh, hence the, the, the title rest or the subject of rest. So you find that uh, maybe if we can quickly just go into the study, you find that uh, we have got a memory text uh, from the book of Psalm, uh, the Psalm, the 84th Psalm, and uh, the verse is two. So I don't know if anyone is willing uh, and close to their Bible to just read for us. Um, Psalm 84, verse two. Um, if not, I will. My, I will my soul longs, yes, yes thank you. even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Thank you. Very, very, um, I think, very relatable text. Um, you know, this person uh, sounds like someone who's going through an anxious moment you know, and a moment um, where there's a lot of uncertainty and yet there seems to be so much that goes on. And so in that moment, this person has, this ang anxious person is crying out to the Lord. And um, I think when we hear a text or when we read a text such as this, uh, you find, you start to think about you know, statements like time waits for nobody. Um, you find that our lives are full of, like I've mentioned uh, earlier, you know, are full of things going on. You would think that with the advances in scientific um, discovery, uh, which basically are supposed to make some processes take shorter time to complete and so forth, it would create enough time for, for other things that are more important. But you find that as much as science has created all these discoveries and has brought all these things to us, time seems to still not be enough, you know, and we, we find that we are, we, 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 you know, the Sabbath is already on upon you. And you're like, how did this week pass? How, how, how did this, how, <laughs> you know, and then you find you, you have to still do some other things on the Sabbath, you know, you still have to call some people, you still have to close off some, some projects there, there, and then finally go to church or finally, you know, log on to, to Zoom. So these are some of the things that, you know, you find that we are going to be looking at in this 24-7 um, society that we are now living in. And so how do you, you know, how do you manage you know, in this society, how do you, how do you, um, how do you keep, how do you keep um, your engine running? Because you're going to be looking at things like, you know, uh, basically we're going to be looking at rest pretty much. And they're looking at rest uh, in the Old Testament, rest for the weary. Um, they're looking at a restless uh, wanderer. And uh, we're going to also go deeper into looking into that. But I think what we're just looking at is how to relate uh, and pretty much in the rest of the quarter, um, how to live um, in the rest that Christ has guaranteed, the, the, the life that, the lifestyle that Christ has, has, has uh, you know, set for us. Does, the question is, does what the Bible say to us or require of us um, juxtaposed next to uh, the kind of lives we've created for ourselves, um, does it still relate? Is it still um, relevant? You know, uh, are we are we too advanced for the Bible? Are we, you know, and all these other things? Uh, is it necessary? Is it is it even necessary for us to have, um, you know, rest in our in our, in, our, in, our, in, our, in and of ourselves? So I don't know if there's any uh, any questions or any. Uh, citations or any comments as we move on with the study 
at this point. If you have any questions, please um, just uh, chime in. Um, uh, I will be going on, or I will be moving on as as we as we do. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm going to ask someone right now. I'm just going to ask someone um, to please open your Bibles. I'm just going to ask you all to please open your Bibles with me to the book of Genesis chapter chapter two. And we are looking at uh, the subject of worn and weary, um, you know, and I think the, the major question we have is why would God create um, a, a day of rest before anyone was tired? You know, why, why did God create the Sabbath before, um, you know, anyone had yet been in any activity or any, 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 any labor, so to speak? Um, and so if, if anyone is on Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, please uh, kindly read for us. Okay, hi, I will read. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Verse 3, then God blessed the seventh day day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. <clears throat> so I, I just want to, before I, I, I make any comments, I, I just want to ask um, what, what do you think is the reason for the creation of a Sabbath before any, any, any labor or any time? Anyone? Okay. Uh, teacher, can you repeat that question? I, I didn't, we didn't catch it here. Okay. Yeah, the question is, why, why would God create the Sabbath? Why, what, what is the basis of creating rest before the labor? Morning, teacher. Um, yes. I'm going to try ne, yeah. and answer your question. I think he did, he did this simply because he needed a day whereby we can all come together as his family and worship him. Remember, in the six days he was working, on the seventh day he was not even tired. I don't think he ever gets tired. But for us, he knew that we will need a rest and also he needed time to spend with us. In the six days, we are so busy. We're doing whatever we're doing. We make time for him, but it is not enough. And then on this day, he, this is a day whereby we worship him, we adore him, we sing praises to him. We give him 100% attention because he's the creator. And I think probably that's why he created this day because he wanted to have that 24 hour communion with us, having our minds tuned to him and forgetting about everything else that is happening around us. I don't know, I'm just trying, thank you. No, thank you for your, for your insight, thank you very much. Um, teacher? Uh, yes? Yes, yeah, so I think uh, on my side, what, what, what seems apparent to me is that perhaps rest has very little to do with labor, which is why God would put it before labor. When you then look at what transpired in that first Sabbath and what we then learn throughout the Bible about the Sabbath is that rest could imply a time for reflection which is why man is created. And the first thing they do is rest, not because they are tired, but because as you are now a new creature, you must now rest in the Lord and reflect on what he has done before you can move forward. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, interesting insights, you know. Some of the things that came to my mind when I was thinking about this question, um, you know, is number one, 
that God is always ahead of, of circumstances. God does not react to things, but he is proactive. So in creating rest before the labor is because um, the labor will come, but God has made provision um, for it. Uh, he has made an outlet. So um, this also goes to say that sometimes when God is dealing or doing things in your life, you don't understand what he's doing because the things he's preparing for are not in the present, but in the future. And so when you look at what God is asking, for example, when God asks Noah to build an ark, it doesn't make sense to build an ark in a, in a, in a time when, rain, when there's never been rain before, because God does not work like that. He doesn't prepare for the present, but he pre prepares in advance. So that's how God is like. And also another thing that you realize about rest is that the first thing that Adam and Eve were supposed to do was to marvel in the creation of God, to, to, to say, wow, this is, what God has, this is what God has done for us, you know, to say, you know, to just, the first thing that they woke up to was to just look at the, good, the goodness of God, to say, wow, this is all God has done for us. And so that's, I think that's the most important thing to life. The most important thing to life is to see what God is doing in your life. And when you look at the relationship between labor and rest, you realize that the requirement of men to labor and toil to produce came after sin. But it's not God's ideal. God doesn't ideally want us to suffer to produce. But rather labor should just be a something that happens as a, just a, joy, a joyful thing rather. But production and provision must be God's and is God's prerogative. So God is the one who provides and who caters for all our needs. Um, and, 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 and so that's what they were supposed to see um, when, when, they, when they entered into a rest without having um, done anything. Without it. They did nothing towards what was in front of them. All they were supposed to do was to enjoy. But there's five um, points that we find on, on the worn and, the, worn and weary um, on Sunday that maybe we could look at, and there's a couple of verses as well, but I don't think we'll have time to read all the verses, but we could just look at <clears throat> these points uh, individually. So we look at Mark chapter 6, uh, verse 31, and you find that in Mark chapter 6, verse 30, 31, I think the most important point is that God did not create us for a perpetually busy lifestyle or a per perpetually busy life cycle. In other words, uh, being a workaholic, you know, um, and, and having no rest and whatever, what, and all that kind of lifestyle, that's not godly. I don't think God created us for a lifestyle like that. And so when you find that the demands that of society, the society that we live in, which is secular, by the way, uh, requires certain things that are not what God requires of us. We, hence the question I asked earlier is, are, are, we, are we still... Uh, is there relevance in what God is requiring of us? Is there relevance in what God has uh, stipulated? And what God has stipulated will not change. And then the second point that you find is in Psalm 4 verse 8, which is God has created us to have a time of rest and refreshment. So it's within, it's hardwired within your DNA. Number one, it's hardwired within your DNA that you cannot go on without rest perpetually just working, working and working with no rest. That's number one. Number two. And this also goes on to the, to the whole of creation. In fact, many of you, if you if, um, have been following what's going on, you probably may be aware that a lot of scientists have discovered because of this COVID situation that we're in and all these lockdowns that we're going through, that actually the world needs rest. You know, the, the earth needs to rest at some point. Because now they are seeing that, you know, because of lockdowns, because of these industries being shut down and all these things, you find in areas that previously have been uh, polluted and, you know, in places where you could not even see the, the ground from the sky because of the pollution and not from cloud cover. They are seeing that there's a lot of change because of these lockdowns. So people have resolved that, you know, we definitely need to come up with some rest policy, you know, some policy on rest, you know. And we know that, uh, you know, these policies will not be in our favor, but they have, it has taken the world almost 6,000 years plus to come to a resolution that 
what God has said in Genesis chapter two is definitely, you know, valid and true. And so you go to Deuteronomy chapter five, verse 14, and you find that God created a time where all must rest. So we are going to discover as we move on with the lesson that rest is not only optional. God doesn't just suggest it to you, but requires it. So in other words, God requires you to rest, not just that you should. It's not a suggestion, but it's a requirement. And then um, you find that uh, in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, and this is a very common text, um, God created a time where all creation may find rest. So God has made provisions, like I said earlier, that God doesn't re react, but has, has gone ahead of time. He has gone ahead uh, into, into, into the future and made provisions for that future. So when he says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, he is already there. You know, he has already made provision for, for all humanity to rest. And then Exodus chapter 23, verse, uh, verse 12, which talks about um, the commandment that has been given to rest on the Sabbath day, but also enforces that rest must be even for the name, for your neighbors and for the, for the slave and everyone that is in your gates. In other words, I think the major point that is coming out here is that rest is for everybody. And along, under this point, we need to also, as Christians who are Sabbath keeping, <laughs> be mindful and be, you know, be, uh, be, be, be mindful of others to say, okay, if I go, like someone has given an example and say, why shouldn't I go to a restaurant on a Sabbath day? And the answer is because if I do that, I'm expecting those that are at the restaurants to not keep the Sabbath, number one, and not to rest, you know, and I'm also <laughs> going to break the Sabbath. So when you are resting, you're not just, thinking about yourself to say, oh, I want to keep the Sabbath. I want to rest. I want to make sure I don't do anything. But you are also mindful of those around you. Uh, if you have those that help you in the house, you need to be mindful of them. You need to be mindful of those that may not even, they're strangers. They don't even keep the Sabbath. But because they're in your gates and because they're in your home, they must see the value of rest. They must see uh, the benefits of um, of uh, of having a Sabbath. Okay, uh, we're going to quickly move on. Um, if there are any questions or contributions to this, uh, to, to Sunday, uh, we can quickly move on to Monday. And I'm just gonna ask if you have any contribution to just quickly, um, just quickly uh, give it uh, or a question and then we quickly move on. Okay. Hi, teacher. Uh, yes. I just want to read one comment quickly from a commentary. It's a Bible commentary about the section where it says, and God blessed. It says a blessing means an increase in well being. On the Sabbath day, the body is blessed with a renewal of its reproductive strength and the soul with an increase in its intellectual and reasoning capabilities. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, uh, for that uh, reading. Um, now we're looking at um, running on empty and uh, let's just quickly turn our Bibles to the book of Jeremiah chapter 45. So please, if you have uh, your Bibles handy, I'm just gonna ask you to quickly please read. Isaiah chapter, sorry, Jeremiah chapter 45 is uh, from verse one. Uh, and we're going to just, we're going to look at, um, we're going to look at verse one to verse, perhaps verse five. Um, and we're looking at running on empty. And uh, basically what we're looking at in, in, in this um, section is, uh, the scribe of Jeremiah. Now, maybe the context is, um, you know, Israel as a nation had, uh, was on the brink of a siege. And this siege is uh, perhaps the one that uh, we remember results in the capturing of the Israelites into slavery, into Babylon. And you find that the, the, the prophet 
Jeremiah has been imprisoned, but his servant, um, Baruch, has information that he requires to send, or he has information that is very important that he wants to, to share. In fact, it's very depressing, info. It's, it's very hard information that he has. He wants to share with, uh, with, he has to deliver to the children of God also, and also to, to Jeremiah. So he's caught in a, in a, in a hard place. And he is also hopeless. You know, he's, he's feeling hopeless. He's feeling depressed. He's feeling anxious and all these things. And so God delivers to him a, a, a message. So, okay, maybe let's just go to, to, to verse 1. If anyone, if there's someone who's gone to Isaiah, to Jeremiah 45, verse 1. Uh, all right, teacher. Um, you just want uh, verse 1 or should I read verse 1 to 5? Uh, we're going to be moving um, bit by bit, so maybe just take verse by verse so that we we, we get understanding. All right, thank you, teacher. Uh, I'm reading from the Message Bible. It reads as follows. This was uh, Jeremiah's uh, told Barak one day in the fourth year of Jehoiakim's uh, uh, reign as he was taking detection over the prophet. That is verse one. Continue, continue yes. These are the words of God, God of Israel, to you, Barak. You say these are bad times for me. It's one thing after another. God is mm. piling on, on the pain. I'm worn mm. out and there's no end in sight. Mm. It's up to verse 3. Continue. I think just going to verse five. Is fine. Look around. What I've built, I'm about to wreck. What I've planted, I'm about to rip up. I'm doing it everywhere, all over the whole world. Mm. So forget about making any big plans for yourself. Things are going to get worse before mm. they get mm. But don't worry. I'll keep you alive through the whole business. Right. I think we are seeing, um, you know, this, this very, you know, pregnant message that is coming to to jeremiah and listen to to baruch sorry and listen to the to how jeremiah as a prophet who is in a hard hard place is speaking to baruch you know uh you know i don't know about you but don't you just say thank you to you know thank you god for people who even though themselves are going through a hard time but they spare a moment to, to have mercy on you and to, to speak to your situation and to encourage you in a difficult time, even though themselves are, are not, you know, are no better. They are, not, they are in a tough situation themselves, but they have the, the emotional resolve to be able to, you know, to think about you and to, to, to consider you in, 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 a, in a difficult situation. And now we're seeing uh, um, um, Baruch who is spent. And Baruch is basically just a representation of some of us. Um, there are times where we do this, you know, this work of, uh, for the Lord. We, we serve the Lord. We do all these things. But at some point, you reach your, your, your empty. You know, you reach your, your moment. And sometimes you're going on and on. You're trying to balance life. As at work, you're trying to balance, um, you know, doing church work. You also want to meet these targets and so forth. And you find that maybe even on the Sabbath, the day that you are supposed to be at rest, you are, you are all over the place. You're running up and about and you're doing all these things. And then, you, you, you know, you, you sometimes can get to a point where you are, you are spent. And I think the tragedy is to, to get to that point and still want to... Um, you know, to act as though things are fine. And I'm glad that here with, with Baroque, the situation is clear. He's, he's clearly having a meltdown. You know, he's clearly showing that things aren't fine for me. And, you know, some of our leaders, for example, will, 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 will not be able to, to come up and say, oh, you know, saints, I'm, 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 I think I'm, I'm, I'm at a low right now. I'm, I think, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not okay, you know, can you, can you please pray for me or something like that? You know, and I, I think as an authority in, in, in the church, I think you need to have a, 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 a delegative or a successionary kind of strategy to say, 
when you are down, when you are not there, when you are not capable, when you are at your lowest, who takes up the mantle, who takes up the banner? Because the mission that we have as a church, as a, as a, as a community, is not a sprint. It's not a one-man thing where you find that it's a, we're, we're rooting for one guy. No, it's a, it's a marathon that has so many people that are passing the baton from one person to the other and to the other. And so you find that running on empty is something that can happen. It's something that you can actually think that, oh, okay, I, I, I won't get tired. I won't get weary. But there are moments. Even you find, um, if you read the story of John the Baptist, at one point, this guy who was saying, prepare the way for the Savior, you know, behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. This guy is, is excited about Jesus. But at one point, you know, he sends his disciples in a low moment in, the, in prison and says, you know, go and ask him if, <laughs> if, he's the genu- if he's the guy or we should wait for another guy. So there are those moments where you are running on empty, where you are, you know, where you are at your lowest. And sometimes the news is not good. Like in the, in the case of Baruch, the news is, you know, things are going to get worse before they get better. Things are going to be harder and tougher. You have to still, Baruch, you still have to relay this message. You still have to take these notes down and you still have to, write them, you know, with, with whether you're trembling, whether you are, you are crying, you're weeping, you know, but you have to do the work, you know. And I think also maybe what's more important to note is that as much as it was painful for Baruch, I think it was more painful for God because this is God who has taken these children, his children, um, you know, and has saved them from, 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 from a fire. He has planted the vineyard um, like we find in Isaiah chapter 5. And now God has to destroy this, this thing that he has built. He has to, to destroy his, his, his chosen people. And so I think that is a very painful thing for God. And um, so I think maybe the question is, um, you know, we have our leaders, we have our, uh, you know, our, our pastors or whoever who run on law. Sometimes they run on empty, actually, not on law, empty empty i don't know the church sometimes they, they'll be talking like hey mara the hey the pastor simmons these days hey <laughs> ah did you did you did you get where he was going you know <laughs> and sometimes people can be like that but i think what we fail to see sometimes is that this is a human being who you know can actually you know feel the pinch of of be it problems be it whatever it is that's happening so maybe the question is, what can we do maybe to help in such a situation where we have a brother, a sister, a leader, whoever, you know, running on empty? In fact, what can we do to create a, a, a community, you know, where people can run on empty and still be able to find a recharge or, you know, can find help? I don't know if you have anything to say on that as we move on. Um, teacher, I think to answer your question at a, so the way I understand your question is that it, it, it relates to a, at a practical level, how yeah. do we help one another? I think um, my take on that would be to exercise a all hands on deck approach. In other words, yes, you've got leadership. Yes, they've got responsibilities. But as community members, um, we are also expected to do our bit. And if we are to go into specifics, one would say, as a baptized member of the church, there are things that you vowed you would, be, you would do, all right? Over and above the, the, the 28 fundamental beliefs, there are vows, 13 vows that you made when you got baptized. And some of those allude to the fact that you would support the church with your resources and time, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, within a church context, I would then say to, 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 help, to help the brethren who might be running low, if it is leadership, for instance, we ought to play our part all as members, as we had vowed to do so when we got baptized. Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, I see other hands. Um, I'm going to try and uh, give you time, but not now. So please forgive me and uh, allow me to, to, to just move on so that we can have a bit of um, flesh and then we can just chop it up and discuss it. Um, okay, so we, we have moved on to now looking at rest in the, in, the, in the scripture. And so we're going to be looking at rest in the Old Testament first, and then we're going to look at rest in the New Testament. So you find that rest is not a concept that is not that is just uh, perhaps a New Testament concept, but has existed throughout Scripture in in many in many ways or in many words. In fact, in the Old Testament, there are about thirty four uh, words, uh, re excuse me, referring to rest that are in Hebrew. So they refer to rest, rested, or resting, and then there is about one. Uh, in Chaldean language that also refers to rest, which is also in the Old Testament. So there's about 34, 35, if you want to take the Chaldean reference, about 35 references to rest um, in the Old Testament. And uh, we are probably just going to look at maybe just five. We're not going to look at all of them. Uh, we're going to look at about five of them um, references in the Old Testament. Um, the first one is Shachab. Um, shahab or shakab, uh, whichever way you want to pronounce it. And shahab or shakab it means to lie down or to or to sleep. And shahab or shakab happens about two hundred eight times in um, in the Old Testament. Uh, we find it um, in um, Genesis chapter twenty eight verse eleven that, that the first time we find it. And uh, Genesis twenty eight eleven, if you remember, is when Jacob is uh, on a is fleeing from his brother um, Esau and decides to rest uh, with it takes a rock and rests uh, his head um, while while on his way and on that um, on that I mean while he does that that resting that act of resting by the way. All these words that we're going to be reading, you find out that they are verbs. So they evolve, they involve activity. And so you find he rests, and that resting is shahab, which is akin to the Sabbath, which is akin to resting. Um, the, the second word that we are going to look at is Shabbat. Shabbat is to cease and to desist, to immediately stop. Um, and to rest or to take a holiday or to celebrate. And Shabbat happens about 71 times in the Old Testament. And Shabbat is the word that we find in Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 to 3, the one, the verse that we've just read earlier, which talks about the Sabbath. And I'm sure many of you, when you heard Shabbat, you've heard, you hear the word Sabbath. So this is where we find the Sabbath or where we find um, the word uh, sabbat, sabbat or Shabbat to rest, to cease, to immediately stop. And then uh, we have the third word is Nuak or Nuak. Nuak means to rest, to settle down, to remain, to lay down and, and to be quiet. Um, it happens about 67 times uh, in, the, in the Old Testament and Nuak is the word we find in Exodus 20 verse 11, when the Bible says, um, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Six days you, thou shalt labor, but on the seventh day you shall rest. That rest word is nuak, which means to settle down, to remain, to lay down, to be quiet, to be peaceful. Um, it also happens in Genesis chapter Chapter 8, verse 4. Um, and then we have uh, the fourth word, with this, which is uh, shakat. Shakat? Shakat happens about 40, 41 times. And shakat means to be quiet um, and to be undisturbed. So when you're at shakat, you're quiet and undisturbed. And it happens in Joshua. Uh, chapter uh, 11 verse 23 when the bible talks about the the resting of the of the land 
after the war. So after the war uh, and the conquest of, Je of Joshua, the Bible says the rest was, the, I mean, the land was rested. That resting of the land is what is called shakat. Um, and then we have the fifth word, which is raga. Raga means uh, to toss violently. Now, this is interesting because it is akin to rest, but it also means to toss violently. And so it talks about uh, you know, a violent turn or a violent burst, um, but it is also akin to rest. So it, dis it, 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 it sort of describes an inability to, to rest. So I just wanna quickly move on and just show some, some takeaways or some points that we can glean from, um, about, from learning about the Sabbath in the Old Testament. Uh, the first point that you learn uh, about the Sabbath in the Old Testament is that the, the Sabbath means, I mean, rest means complete peace and security in Jesus, even when surrounded by uncertainty and fear. So when you rest, it's not a matter of uh, there being any no violence or no 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 threats or no noise or no, you know. You know, it's it's like for example in times that, like like the ones we live in, where we have so much going on with 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 the COVID situation and the economy and the what what and some there's violence in Swaziland and all these things. When you rest, it doesn't mean that there's nothing that can cause you to fear, but you rest in Jesus because you know that the rest that He provides, He provides it with security and peace. And then the second point is rest means intimacy. I forgot to mention this. Um, it's, um, I think it should be. It should be, yes, the word shakab. Shakab also doesn't just mean to lie down and sleep in the sense of uh, going to bed to sleep. But shakab also means to lie down sexually, to lie down with someone intimately. Uh, so the word shakab is used uh, to refer to the to the case of uh, uh, J Joseph and Potiphar's wife. When she called Joseph to her house, she said, "Come down and shakab with me. Come down and lie down. Come and lie down with me." So rest in in the Old Testament doesn't just mean um, rest from your labor, but it also means um, intimacy. It means excitement and joy with Jesus to be close to God. It means rest means you need. It's a time to get closer and intimate with your God to be to know each other well and deeply. And um, and so it it it, it should pro produce it should produce an excitement and a joy to. To, to have that opportunity to get close to a savior. And then number three is setting aside your own labor um, and resting in God. That's the third point you find in uh, the Sabbath, oh, sorry, in resting in the Old Testament. And then the fourth point is rest can be enforced by God. It can be enforced by God. And you will find you will find this point in Exodus. I, we don't have time to read, but you will find it in Exodus chapter five, verse five, which is Shabbat. Shabbat is a requirement. It's not just a suggestion, like I, I mentioned earlier, but it's a requirement. So when you rest, you you, you can be forced by God to rest. And then uh, number five is setting down. Rest means to settle down and to ab uh, to abide with God. So settling down and abiding with God is also resting. And then um, number six, rest also means to be quiet and to be undisturbed. So in other words, you also have to be proactive as to find the things that can disturb you. You can have switch off, you know, the gadgets that you think maybe, you know, they can disturb you, all these things that can, you know, take your mind away. You need to rest from those things. You need to be undisturbed. And then number seven, um, rest also stirs up 
action. Rest stirs up action, it, it raga, it creates, um, it, it stirs up action with, from within you. Um, okay, I'm just gonna quickly move on to rest in the New Testament and then maybe we can have a comment or two uh, because I can see time is rushed, is moving. So when we look at rest in the New Testament, we are looking at, um, basically I think the, the, the issue with the rest in the New Testament is that a lot of theologians suggest that there's no Sabbath talk in the New Testament. There's no, the rest that we find in the New Testament is just, you know, rest. But the talk of the Sabbath is, is done away with, with the Old Testament. So this sort of uh, separatist kind of theology where we say that the Old and the New Testament are separated, they're, they're separate, they've got no relation, they, there's no correlation. But however, um, you will find that that is not true. Um, the, the Bible does talk about a rest in the New Testament. In fact, you find that in the very famous text that I think we've read, uh, which is Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28, which talks about, um, you know, rest says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That word rest that is mentioned in Matthew 11 is anapao. Um, you know, anapao, which means to rest, to relax and to refresh. Interesting is that the same word anapao, which is mentioned uh, to refresh, is also mentioned uh, in, the, in the Old Testament as nefesh, which is what happens uh, when God created his, um, on, the se on the seventh day, what God did, did was to nefesh, which is to, which is to refresh and to not necessarily rest because he was weary, but to refresh as to, to, to just marvel at the works of his hands, to say, wow, this is the work of my hands and to refresh in it and to relax in it. So that is what is mentioned here as the anapao, which is to rest, to, re to relax, to refresh. And another um, uh, reference also in anapao uh, may refer to you know, a physical rest as mentioned in Matthew, uh, Matthew 26, verse, um, Matthew 26, verse 45. Um, and it also refers to, so the nefesh or the anapao in the Greek, which is to refresh, does not only just refer, refer sorry, to a non-physical act, but also refers to a physical act. And also, we find that Paul um, mentions this in his final greetings um, uh, to, the Corinth, to, to the Corinthians in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 18, and mentions his spirit being refreshed or being anapao. Another verb, you find that another verb that is also uh, linked to rest or that means rest is has, has caso. Has caso, his caso describes uh, the Sabbath rest. It, it, it um, describes the rest that the disciples um, Okay, if you remember in the book of Luke chapter 23, verse 56, we read about the, the death of Christ and the burial of Christ. And you remember that uh, Mary and Martha had gone to prepare ointments to come and embalm the body of Christ. Um, but uh, the Sabbath came upon them while they were doing that. And the Bible says they rested according to the commandment. So that resting according to the commandment is eskizo. Uh, which is also in the New, Test New Testament. So this heskizo means living a quiet, um, means living a, a quiet life. And someone who does not object, someone who's not objectionary, someone who doesn't, someone who's not confrontational, but someone who's quiet and peace loving is a heskizo kind of person. Um, and then we find in the, in the book of Hebrews, where probably we have a lot of information uh, as, as regarding the Sabbath, you will find that in the book of Hebrews, the, the Bible talks about this Greek uh, verb, um, which refers to rest as katapao, 
katapao means to seize and to bring to rest. And I think for many of you, if you remember, we have another word that also has the same meaning, which is to seize and to desist. And that is the Shabbat in the Old Testament. However, katapao means to bring to rest. It is um, uh, a Greek translation of the Old Testament. And we find it talking about rest in general. But I think the most important text that can also highlight the, uh, the, 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 the issue of rest and also links to the Old Testament as far as the Sabbath is concerned is Hebrews chapter four, verse nine. And Hebrews chapter four, verse nine, and for many of you who have done studies on the Sabbath, remember, I know this text is it's a very common text, you know, for many that uh, doubt the, the relevance of the Sabbath and says there remains a rest, you know, for God's people, there still remains a rest. And so that rest that remains is the, is the Sabbatismos. And Sabbatismos is the direct um, translation of Sabbath. So there, there remains, what Hebrews chapter 4 verse 9 is saying is that there remains a Sabbatismos, a Sabbath, a rest um, for, for God's people. Now, Maybe we can just uh, do a bit of reading um, just quickly. So I'm gonna ask you quickly to just open with me uh, to book, the book of Mark chapter uh, six from verse 30 to verse 32. Just quickly, please read that. Mark six, verse 30 to 32. Um, who can I ask here to read for me? I see Mwila is... Uh, is there. So Mila, could you please just quickly read for us um, Mark chapter 6, verse 30 to 32. All right. And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all the things, both had what they had done and what they had taught. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart from a desert place and rest a while. For they hmm. were made coming and going and they had no leisure so much as to eat. Thank you. We find Christ in the midst of all the excitement that the disciples have, have had, they've done so much, you know, they feel like we are on a roll. We can just go on and on and on. Christ says, okay, okay, it's fine, but take a moment, come here and rest a while, which shows just how important, you know, the rest concept is to to um, you know, to, to God and um, to ourselves as well. It is important to ourselves. There sometimes where we feel that okay, we have to do this work, we have to do this, this meeting. Oh, this meeting has to happen. Oh, that what that church board, that what you know, and to forget that there's also the rest concept. And remember, we've mentioned the the expectations of rest. There's intimacy. There's seizing and desisting. There's there's laying aside of any work there's there's you know meditation upon upon the the, the 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 words of god there's you know there's taking time to spend time with god and people sometimes excuse you know oh, i've got that meeting i've got this meeting and you ask them what have you actually accomplished in this sabbath what have you what have you how much of this sabbath have you enjoyed you've just spent it doing god's work in quotes but what have you really done so you find that Christ tells them to come and rest a while. And it's important to take rest seriously. It's very important to, to, to take rest and to also understand what rest is. So I think at this moment, before we go to uh, Thursday, if there's, um, there's any um, question, um, I don't know if there's any question or contribution at this point. Teacher, <laughs> uh, uh, teacher, I, I do not know. Maybe yes. we could test this thing on, on, on this public platform instead of it being in the chat room. Um, will ask the question, and it's getting hot. Uh, we look at this rest more, but you know, we all grew up in church, and and and. and from a very young age, I remember uh, we'll be bought about 
with Crockett and Jones. Our parents will buy us Crockett and Jones, Lana, and we're wearing long uh, pants to church at the age of 11. I mean, 11 year old, no Crockett and Jones was a lap You know, he can and rest be forced, you know, on us, or, or, or is this a decision of an individual to want to rest? Can we be forced to to to, to keep the Sabbath to rest? Well, the question is forced. Okay, let me explain what I mean by forced. Um, what I mean by forced is um, the same as, uh, for example, "Thou shalt not commit adultery." That statement is not a require. It's not a suggestion. God does not suggest rest to us. He requires it. So if you don't want to rest, it's fine. But it's, it's a mandate. It's, it's mandatory. It's something that God says you, you, you require it. Even if you think you don't, even if you don't know you don't, even if you don't want, but you must rest. In other words, it's not a good thing to rest. Rest is not a good thing. Rest is a requirement. It's not a suggestion. It's not, you know how the Bible is like, it is good to, for example, it is not good for a man to be alone. That, that's, that, that's what the Bible is saying. The Bible is saying, you know, if a man is alone, it's fine, but it's not good for him. But when the Bible says, um, uh, for example, uh, it says uh, uh, to, to lie with a woman um that is not your wife is an abomination to your body it is an abomination to yourself the bible is saying what you are doing in that moment is detrimentary to your health to your well-being to your spiritual well-being it is not something that can indirectly affect you it will directly affect you so what the bible is saying here and why god says you must rest is because going on without rest is not something that's going to affect your health indirectly. It's not going to have indirect effects. The consequences are not indirect. They are direct. Some of the illnesses that we have, some of the uh, problems we have, uh, even the depression, the anxiety, all these things that we suffer from may be attributed to the lack of resting in God, resting in Christ. This thing of trusting God and resting in him, applying the principles that are found in, the, in scripture when it comes to rest, which is chiefly number one, trusting God, simply just resting in him. So I think the concept of forced rest is where I think may, maybe the word I used was perhaps um, negative or so to speak, but th that is what it simply means to rest, to, to have a, a, a requirement or to be required to rest. I'm just gonna take one more comment, please, before we um, conclude. Teacher? Yes. Yes. Thank, th thank you for that. Um, I think mine is just a general comment on uh, this week's lesson as well as the lesson for the quarter. First thing that came to mind um, when, when, when I looked at the theme for the quarter, resting in Jesus, um, what came to mind is, I think we touched on it and it's touched on, on, on Wednesday, of the theology that has used that exact term, resting in Jesus, to negate the need to uh, the need for Sabbath rest. So there is a theology that has used that exact term as almost the opposite or an antidote for um, 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 Sabbath rest. Some years ago, there was even a very famous pastor and preacher. Every Christian on earth knows this guy. He went on on his pulpit and did a series of sermons where he attacks and even demonizes the Sabbath in favor of resting in Jesus. He uses resting in Jesus as an attack on the Sabbath, right? And of course, some few weeks later, um, our pastor from Breath of Life there, Pastor Bird, then responded with his own series um, of, of, of sermons, but I just wanted to put that out and just maybe, you know, express my thoughts um, outwardly about how interesting I find this particular topic uh, and how I will, how, you know, I want to see it unfold throughout the quarter because that term, rest in Jesus, is used specifically to attack the Sabbath and the keeping of the Sabbath. Thank you. No, thank you, thank you, my my, my order. 
I think it's important, yes. Uh, I think maybe just something that I just want to say that if if you take away nothing from this, uh, you know, from this lesson, I think the important thing that you should take away is if you were treating rest, especially on the Sabbath, as just a commandment to fulfill, but not necessarily considering how it affects you and what it can do for you, then maybe this lesson is what you needed. You needed to know, or you needed this lesson to, to open your eyes, to see that, okay, this is something that I need. God didn't just say, remember this, because you know the Sabbath commandment may feel unlike many, other of the, many of the other commandments, may feel like it has no direct impact on your life because when you steal you feel like okay if i steal i can get you know i can go to jail i can get beaten up i can you know if i convert i can you know and all these things but if i don't rest on the sabbath what can happen to me well there's a lot that can happen to you which are, which is not just spiritual but physical as well so um the i think the the, con the conclusion of uh, the lesson uh, goes on to Yes, rest, Buffet, rest. <laughs> it, it goes on to look at uh, the story of Abel and Cain. I'm sure it's a very common uh, story that we are familiar with. And it, the, the title is Restless Wonder. Um, you know, uh, the Bible says, uh, you know, God, when God was presented with it, it, okay, Genesis chapter 4, verse 1 to verse 12 is where we are. And so in, from verse one, the Bible tells us that God, you know, uh, uh, Adam and Eve had children. And when they had children, uh, they had Cain, who was a tiller of the ground. And then they had Abel, who was a shepherd. And when it came to presenting their offerings before the, before the Lord, um, you know, Abel presented a more faithful offering. He presented uh the first the firstborn of uh the lamb of the sheep that he was taking care of in the fat thereof and god respected that uh, offering verse four of uh, genesis so that respect uh of the offering is to investigate the word used as respect there is to investigate and to consider closely so god considered and respect uh, investigated both the offering of Cain and of Abel. And the problem, the Bible says, is that God did not respect um, that of Cain. Now, the Bible is not really clear um, why God did not respect uh, the, the offering of Cain. It's not clear. But what we can learn is that, or what is possible is that, number one, the knowledge of the sacrifice and what it meant had already been given to Adam and Eve. When God uh, um, made garments uh, for them in, in, in the garden when they had sinned um, and gave them those garments, they, that is where they learned the first time the importance of, of, of sacrifice and the, the, the sacrificial system in, in general. So we find that later on we have Cain who has been judged by God and he has been judged to leave after he has been asked by God, what, what have you done? Uh, I hear the blood of your, of your brother, Abel, after he had murdered him, by the way. I hear it crying from beyond, below the altar, which means God knew about the death. And so it's, what, have, what have you done? Where's your brother? And he says, am I my brother's keeper? You know, so to sort of sarcastic, you know, being sarcastic, you know. Um, and then, so we have, we hear the judgment that God placed upon Abel. If we could just quickly go to Genesis chapter four, verse 13 to 17. If someone can just quickly read for us, please, 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 quickly. Please. I can see a lot of people departing. Please, 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 please. Genesis 13. Anyone? I'll read in your hearing quickly just to come to a conclusion. So it says Genesis. the Bible, okay. Genesis chapter 4, verse 13 to verse 13. Mm -hmm. Chapter 4, verse 13 to 17. 
verse 13, it says, And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Mm. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall mm. be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest anyone, any finding him, should kill him. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he builded a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. Mm. So he was banished from the face of God um, and was given a punishment of wandering the earth, you know, in, 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 in solitude and in loneliness. And a mark was placed upon him uh, to, to bear a, a sign for, 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 the, for the curse or the sin that he had committed. Um, and Cain reacted to that judgment. He says, this is, this is, this is too severe. A, 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 you know, a curse or a, a, a judgment you can place upon. But I think the most important takeaway from this is how our sins can present us or can put us in moments of restlessness. Um, in fact, I want to go on a limb and say that all the restlessness you have in your life is caused by sin. And so you can say, oh Lord, um, why am I like this? Why, 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 why is it like this? Why is it so sad? And so I want us to just uh, maybe just come to an end quickly because definitely time is up and sum it up and say that we, we need to rest. Um, it's not just an idea. It's not just a fancy concept. Sabbath is not just the name of a church or a day. It's something that our body even requires. Um, it's something that even our health requires and depends upon. And also, not just physically, but more so spiritually, we do need a moment in time where we do come to our Lord to come to our God and the Sabbath or resting presents us with such a great opportunity. May God bless you. Um, I'm just going to ask, um, in fact, let us, let, let us pray. Let me, let me, let me pray. Let, let us pray. Our Father, which is in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to have had a study of your word. We thank you for allowing your spirit to come through to show us some of the things that perhaps we did not know. But above all, Heavenly Father, I ask that you impress these messages upon our hearts. Continue to speak to us in a manner that we will eventually understand. Help us to grow uh, in, this, in the manner that you do require us to grow. I pray for these studies and lessons that are coming our way. Help us to benefit uh, from them in, in the way you intend. Above all, please write our names, Lord in the book of life. Remember us in your kingdom when you come a second time. This is my humble prayer. In Jesus' name, that for us on Calvary. Amen. Uh, thank you very much for your, for your time. Um, I don't know if I should...